So if there's one thing I think everyone who is watching this video can agree on is we don't like reserves. No one who plays Black Ops 4 says their favorite part of the game is reserves or getting lucky out of a drop. Nobody really says that, and supply drops have been around in Call of Duty for a while now, using various systems, various different algorithms of giving you items, but in Black Ops 4, we have reserves. And as we're going to find out throughout this video, reserves is absolutely one of the most egregious supply drop systems we have ever seen in a Call of Duty game. And once I break down the numbers and show you guys exactly what I'm talking about, I think you will kind of understand. So throughout this video, we are going to look at what are the odds of actually getting an individual item and on top of that how much time or how much money would it actually take to own every single reserve item in the game that is what we are talking about today so without further ado i present to you the real numbers behind reserves so to understand the numbers behind reserves, you first have to understand how reserves work within game. So first of all, there are reserve cases. These are what you earn by playing the game, completing contracts, things like that. When you open these cases, they give you individual items. You're only guaranteed an individual item every third item. As you can see on the screen, we get duplicates. On our third duplicate, it re-rolls and gives us a new item that we haven't unlocked before. Now, the way you actually earn these cases is in a couple of ways. First of all, you can get one with your daily tier skip. In multiplayer, this is winning a game. In blackout, it's getting a kill. And in zombies, you get it after completing a few rounds. On top of that, there are contracts. As you can see here, there is daily contracts that you can complete and earn some cases as well. And then finally, after you've leveled up your black market contraband stream past the top maximum level, you then earn contraband reserves instead of the actual items. Those are the three ways that you can potentially earn reserves. Now, they have also recently added duplicate protected crates. This costs six cases to open, but when you do open them, you are guaranteed to get items that you don't already have. In other words, that duplicate rule we talked about before no longer applies. After that, we actually have reserve crates. These are similar to cases, but the difference is, is you can only buy these. You can either get them from buying bundles within Blackjack Shop, or you can literally buy them by themselves for 200 COD points. The difference with these is they give you three items. Once again, you're only guaranteed a new item after getting three duplicates. And then finally, there is weapon bribes. This guarantees you one new weapon that you didn't previously have if you get an ultra weapon bribe. If you have a regular weapon bribe, it just guarantees you either a Mark II weapon, a Mastercraft variant, or potentially a new weapon. So let's go ahead and actually look at the numbers behind this. Right now, there is 1,316 items behind reserves. 1,316. So the math is kind of easy to figure out the minimum and maximum amount of cases you can potentially open. For example, if you're using cases and you want to get all 1,316 items, if you got as lucky as possible and never rolled a duplicate, the maximum amount of cases you would have to open is 1,316. But on the other hand, if you completely got absolutely unlucky and rolled a duplicate every single time, except of course the first time because you have to get a new item on the first time, you would have to open 3,947 cases. That is the absolute worst case scenario. So those are pretty simple to calculate. One is the minimum amount of times to open cases and one is the max. And it's not just as easy as picking the number in the middle for the average. There's actually a calculation you have to do that is way way over my head. Luckily, I have some friends that are much, much smarter than me. One of them is a computer engineer, and I actually went to him and asked him what we could do to figure this out. And he said, yeah, doing a calculation to figure out the average would be good, but what would actually be better is to run simulations to actually figure out the average amount of cases you would need to open to get every single item in the game. So, he went ahead and ran 10,000 simulations for me, as you are seeing on screen here, and found the average number of cases you have to open to get every single item in the game. And to be honest with you, it wasn't as many as I actually expected. I thought it was going to be closer to 3,000, but in reality, the average is 2,167 cases, if you round up, 68 cases that you would actually have to open to get every single item, on average. 
and just so you know, the reason why it says hours there is because we were doing the calculation with one case takes one hour to earn. That's since we've done that calculation changed a little bit. Don't worry. We'll address that in a little bit. By the way, that average number I just gave you, the amount of items, that 2,168 items, that is what your odds are going to be of getting an individual item. So if you want the peacekeeper or you want the locust or whatever, you want an individual weapon, your odds are going to be one in 2,168 of actually getting that every time you open a reserve. It'll get slightly better based off of whether the duplicates you have or whatever, but it's going to be around there pretty consistently. And that's insane. So we can actually do a lot of different things with this number. We can average it out and figure out how long it would actually take to play the game to get all of these items. We can figure out how much it would cost on average to buy every single item. We can also figure out whether or not it is worth buying duplicate cases. And as it turns out, it is absolutely not. Let me explain. So as we just discussed, to open every single item in the game, you have to open 2,168 cases. That's the magic number. However, to figure out how many cases it would cost to get every item by using the non-duplicates, here is what you have to do. So let me explain here. So you got to do a little bit of math, but the way that this works is that there are 1,316 items in the game. When you open a duplicate protected crate, it gives you three items, which means we have to divide that number by three. That approximately gives us 438, but it costs six cases to actually open one of these. And when we multiply 438 by six, that brings us to 2,632. What this means is that is more cases than the average from just opening regular cases. Remember, 2,168 is that magic number of average amount of cases it takes to open. Now, there is more math you can do to this to figure out the exact point to open duplicate cases, but basically the way to look at it is once you have between 55 and 60% of the items within reserve cases, that's when you start, want to start opening duplicate cases. If you're nowhere near there, you don't want to open duplicate cases. You just want to open normal cases. Now, let's take this a step further. Let's go even further than this. 2,168. That is the magic number of items you actually have to get on average to get every item in the game. So we can take this number and extrapolate a lot from it. So first of all, how much would it cost? How much would it cost to get 2,168 items if you were paying for all of these crates. So the way to do this is you take the 2,168 and you divide it by three. Cause whenever you open a reserve case, you get three items inside. So that brings us down to 722. If you round up 723. So let's take 723 and multiply that by 200. Why? because that's the amount of COD points it takes to actually buy one of these crates. So that brings us to 144,600 COD points you would need to spend. Now, on average, it depends how you actually buy these things. The general equation that I do is normally it's about $1 for every 100 COD points. So that brings us to $1,446. To buy every single item in the game if you want to buy them all right now to some of you that may sound ridiculous to some of you that might be chump change but to me i don't spend almost 1.5 thousand dollars on a video game I, I i like to spend 60 maybe 90 if i'm getting a collector's edition not 1,500, but let's say you're a man who doesn't like spending money on video games, kind of like myself, to be honest with you, and you like grinding it out and trying to get all of the items. How long would it take you to get every single item behind reserves if you were just to play the game? Now, this is actually a really hard calculation to do because to unlock reserves the fastest way possible, you have to have had all of the tiers completed. Then you start unlocking reserve crates. You also get them from challenges. You also get them from your daily tier skip. So it's really hard to to average out how long it actually takes to get one of these but i am gonna go with 45 minutes yes it might be a little bit faster at first especially if you're completing challenges so you might be able to calculate with this for 30 minutes so you know what let's do a range let's do a minimum maximum time range to earn every reserve so once again we got to go back to that magic number 2168 and go from there so once again, we've got that 2,168 items we have to get to get every single item in the game. You take this and multiply it by 45 minutes. 
You are now playing 97,560 minutes. Sorry, that's just a lot of play time. Uh, that is the maximum amount of time it would take to earn all of these. If we divide that by 60 minutes to figure out how many hours, that is 1,626 hours you would have to play. Let, let's divide that by 24 to figure out the amount of days here. That is 67 0.75 days played to get every single item in the game. Now, keep in mind, it might be a little bit faster, it might be a little bit slower, but I'm saying this is the maximum amount of time. If you go ahead and instead of every 45 minutes going ahead and getting a reserve, if you do it for 30 minutes, that averages out to 45 days, which is still an astronomical amount of playtime. It's it's an astronomical amount of time. And just for example, this is my job, is to play Call of Duty, make videos about it. I, I don't come anywhere close to 45 days played. I want to say maximum between blackout and multiplayer, I'm maybe at 12 and I stream the game. I play it and take into account that half of the, that amount of time I played at the beginning of the game's life cycle when reserves weren't even in there. So it just shows you how hard it really is to have gotten all of these items out reserves. It's, it's kind of insane that some people have completed all of these and their playtime might be under this they might get them a little bit faster than the average bear i think people who play blackout get reserves a little bit faster and that is why but i wanted to take this a step further because i wanted to discuss the total price of the game if you were to have bought the game bought in everything that goes with it bought in every single thing in reserves and bought in all of the dlc items how much would this game cost in total so first, we've got to start out with Blackjack Shop. Blackjack Shop has changed drastically over the lifetime of Black Ops 4, but this is where you've been able to go buy bundles, individual items, and what we're going to look at here is if you bought every single item from the start of the game, how much would it cost? Now, I didn't go ahead and do this math. My friend E. coli Espresso made a video breaking down every item that's been in the game, how much they cost, and how much the total is. I'm going to link to his channel down in the description. The video is worth a watch. Check it out. Trust me, really good. He did awesome work on it. But the total cost of every item that's been in Blackjack Shop is $1,396.78. Keep in mind, these calculations are in American. On top of that, you have to take into account the tier system. This is the system that gives you items based off of tiers or time played and buying them, getting them. All of those added in on top of the Blackjack's items is $1,812.14. So, so far we have everything in Blackjack Shop, all of the tiers. Now we need to look at the reserve items. As we talked about before, this would cost around $1,446. You add those two together, it gives you $3,258.14. But don't forget, you also had to buy the game as well. And I'm going to assume you bought the season pass, so that brings you up to around $90 American. If not, you probably bought a more expensive expensive collector's edition and it's more than that but we'll go with $90 so you add $90 to that what do you get $3,348.14 that is the current cost of Call of Duty Black Ops 4 if you were to buy every item in the shop everything from reserves and on top of that all of the tiers and of course you got to buy the game $3,348.14 is the price of black ops 4 that's fucked up so there you have it those are the numbers behind supply drops they aren't exact of course they're going to be a little bit skewed based off of your luck but i gave you some average numbers and that at least gives you a decent idea of what you're looking at I think legally Treyarch or Activision should have to show these numbers. I believe in Canada, they legally have to show you the odds when you go into a casino and play a game. That's why they have those numbers plastered all over the blackjack tables is because they have to show you what the odds are. In this, something that is based on odds, you'd think they would have the same regulations behind it. But in case you were wondering, your odds of getting an item are approximately 1 in 2,168. zero percent there you have it this video isn't about getting you to subscribe to the channel or likes or dislikes or anything like that i just wanted these numbers to be out there so there you have it those are the numbers hopefully you enjoyed the video and until next time guys peace out we are